Kerugoya, and in our understanding, from our interpretation, once the file was referred to this court, the order has expired today. That's our understanding. I'm allowed, we are going to seek the court's guidance of our application dated 18th October. Of course, we understand that there's a recusal application today. But given that those orders would expire on the appointed date, which is today, when the matter was meant to be mentioned, our colleagues' understanding, my lord, is that the application, in the interest, in the public interest, be prioritized so that we are able to hear the application for setting aside of those orders. In any event, my lord, the orders in question were issued by one judge. The matter has now been referred to a three-judge bench. Their nature is problematic, as mentioned by the court. And we would pray that in, time, in terms of aligning the hearing or scheduling the applications to be had in cohort two, that if possible, my lords, we do not want to do anything outside the law. We would request, my lord, that we be had today if it's possible, because the orders expire today. I think my line friend Eric Gumbo would just want to add something on that. My Lord, very briefly, um, I wouldn't want to repeat what. Uh, uh, my Lord, I just wanted to indicate that uh, I would not want to repeat what Learned uh, Senior Counsel Professor Tom Ojenda has indicated, but just for completeness of record, there are two applications. There is one by the Honorable the Attorney General and one by the National Assembly dated the 18th of October 2024. We are ready to go with that for them as soon as you direct, my lord. My, my lord, with your kind permission, Daniel Manzo, um, appearing for the Law Society of Kenya and also for White and Democratic Party who are interested parties. My lord, if the orders are to expire today, then that will be at midnight. My lord, the day is not yet over. We have applications in the afternoon. We are also affected by those orders. And my lord, I suggest after the applications today, then we can discuss that matter before the court adjourns. I thank you, my lord. My lord, Kibe Mungai, on behalf of the petitioners, there are two issues. You can see the senior, the team leader, of the number of all which is not in gas, senior council. That is the first thing that we will deal with it in the afternoon. And as far as we are concerned, uh, the matter is determination of that applications for the simple reason that the issue and an order had already been made that would be first dealt with by the court at the school of yesterday for the application for a choose. The other matters that relates to how we shall deal with the petition and we shall deal with all the applications, including the first application for conservatory orders. Those are matters that, uh, as far as uh, we are concerned, are supposed to be dealt with by the directions. By this bench, if it continues, or by any other bench. And therefore, the, the the issue, my lord, of a back and forth on what is to be had first, the court has already ruled on that. And I believe we need to stick to that. And I am lamenting that even as we sat here, because we have sat a little bit late, there is some work we still needed to do with regard to the applications for the afternoon. So we would like any other businesses that is supposed to be done when, for example, Paul Mute is in the afternoon, we do to do the afternoon. But my Lord, on the directions, the actual directions that have been given by the court, there are two, three things actually that we would like uh, our reaction on behalf of the petitioners. Number one, my lord, is that uh, in giving these directions, we are understanding that the directions are being made pursuant to the mutual rules, the rules of procedure that are applicable. My lord, under the rules of procedure, a lot of the petitions that were filed before last Friday 
are the ones that were filed even on Friday last week, are maturing their last dates for responses. But Lord, as we sit here, we are yet to receive any substantive responses to those, those petitions in either halls from the respondents. And that will have an impact on how soon we can be able to deal with the substantive matters. So, my Lord, I would be expecting that as a further direction, everybody would be required also to comply with the Mutunga rules to the full. <coughs> now, the second issue is that in all the petitions, the subject matter was the impeachment proceedings. The impeachment proceedings was culminating with the impeachment that was done last Thursday and the facts as they happened on Friday. A lot of these petitions would require some amendment so that they, they conform with the last petition so that they are not termed as academic. So that my Lord towards that, the petitioner, including in the petitions where I'm participating, we had requested for money that we would want three days to ensure that any amendments are carried out and then uh, proper, the respondents will indicate they have been saying they can do things within a day or two. They will indicate when they, how much time they need to do the responses because my Lord, that would assist in ensuring that whichever bench is going to hear and determine this matter will be able to give final directions because as we have said, these are interim directions. In order to be able to determine issues for determination, and these are issues that we deal with when we are when when doing pre-trial, issues for determinations that are essential in a matter with so many parties, that would require close of pleadings. And the close of pleadings means that all the responses must be given. So that, my Lord, as far as today is concerned, I urge you respectfully, that the first thing that can be done for is to ensure that the responses in accordance with the Mutunga rules will complete that journey. My Lord, if that is done, it is my view that uh, we will be able to make some progress. In the meantime, my Lord, unless there is any other matter, because there was no other matter that was in your field except directions, we would be happy to leave this place as soon as possible so Just that we are ready in the afternoon. We are most ready. Just before leaving. I think my so you're because I'm on the same side, perhaps so you can have some response on it. Okay. Your Lordship, um, for purposes of clarity and for purposes of not addressing the gallery anymore, permit me to draw the attention of counsel for the Senate to the notice of motion that was filed in respect to the conservatory orders that were granted. The judge sitting in Kirubaya, your lordship, was categorical that he granted prayer number C. Even as we await senior counsel Paul Mwejo to come in the afternoon, the wording of those prayers was so explicit that if my good professor had the opportunity of interacting with the document, which I believe he has not, would have come to the conclusion that the orders were drafted in this manner, that pending, that pending the hearing and determination, that pending the hearing and determination of this application inter parties, this honorable court be pleased to grant the order that were granted. That is therefore to me, your lordship, that question that senior counsel was raising has no seating in the pleadings before you. Number two, your Lordship, since we are here for mention and in the afternoon we are coming for the application for recusal, and I have had the advocates for the respondents insisting on the urgency to hear the application for setting aside, your Lordship, it is important for the court to note that that application is not predicated on any response. And therefore, if I were them, I would be seeking guidance on how to file their replies. Your Lordship, I hope you are following. <laughs> <laughs> Follow it. 
He doesn't seem to be falling for the no, no, no. Why do you say that? But why do you say that? But but you leave it, let me leave it at that. No, no, no. Thank you. I, I think that is sorry, gentlemen. You cannot talk forever. My lord uh, on a very small issue. We do confirm that uh, for his excellency the deputy president Rigari Gashagwa, as the petitioner we have not received responses from the respondents. So it is important that first of all we get directions for the filing of responses because as we speak now we have not received those responses from the respondents. The number two, uh, my colleague senior uh, Kibe has raised issues on filing of uh, responses so that in 522, we had given an indication that we might require to amend our pleadings so that in, before the ruling that was delivered by this bench, there was indication that we might require to amend the pleading. That is in petitions in cohort number one, so that if the court can grant us leave, within three days those amendments can be done. And thereafter, this can also probably affect in some petitions cohort number two. So it is important that we get that particular direction. Finally, my lord, the, this proceeding, because of the nature, uh, the way they are proceeding, would request that probably we be provided with. Sequentially, the trans transcribed uh, proceeding so that in case we require the proceeding again at any time, those can be availed uh, for purposes of good order. That, that is all. Uh, with due respect to counsel, we did not intend to make today this hearing a long hearing. Now we have read our directions and I think you should let us wait for proceedings in the afternoon. Sir, I, I have something to say. Number one, <coughs> The petitioners cannot approbate and reprobate at the same time. They are calling upon the respondents to file their responses. At the, at the same time, they are seeking leave to amend the petitions. How would petitions that are to be amended be responded to when actually it should be the amendments that should come first and then responses follow? Number two, we brought to the attention of the petitioners that the interim order, one of the interim orders expires today, and the other one is the one we are complaining about, that it is actually aggrieving the respondents and should be set aside, the Kiroya order. Therefore, we shall be delving into that as soon as it is practicable. And number three, uh, the reason why we are here, and from the day before yesterday, is due to the applications that were filed on the 18th of October to set aside the ex parte uh, conservatory <coughs> orders. Therefore, that agency cannot be lost or cannot be clouded in whatever else they are saying. It is our position that we should actually proceed and be heard on why those conservatory orders should be set aside. Thank you. And back. Uh, and I made an application for the process and then get joined. My Lord Chancellor Tokola, you are very kind now. You promptly allowed my application. The process and then was to be joined. And also I was to be joined by my name. Uh, you have not many reasons. If you would be kind enough to explain. In which petition? Uh, which, which cohort? I'm sorry, I don't have paper. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll enjoy it. In your own name? Yes, in my own name. It's your own name. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, of course, it was in the... So, so you are petitioner number eight? No. Interested, no. Interested party number eight? Yes. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, my lord. Uh, we just want to restated the position that the agency in this matter cannot be gainsaid or cannot be lost, my lord. <coughs> Under the condition that the replies have not been made, that we have not made replies, is not correct because we have filed 
our responses. And my Lord, at the end of the day, the very led to the empowerment of this uh, uh, of this uh, uh, churches will actually be lost because then we would be going back and forth and at the end of the day my lord we will not have uh, served the public the greater public interest or the greater public good that led to the empanelment which you made that determination yesterday my lord we would urge that we be able to proceed and argue this matter conclusively and rest it once and for all. Thank you. We are no longer accepting any further submissions. I'm saying this, that it is not for court to direct parties when to respond to pleadings. It is not for court to direct parties when to respond to pleadings. But one thing which I can assure you that this bench will not allow anybody to take the process of court in circles, court in circles. So if you have been served the document, whether petition, petition, if you don't respond, the court is, in, uh, is allowed to infer that you have no response. If a petition has been filed and you have not responded to it, the court will make inference that you have no response to that petition. And uh, by the very nature of these proceedings, we all acknowledge that they are public interest proceedings. No party will be allowed to take the court in circles. So I ask you, respond to the pleadings, file your petitions, respond to them. Don't come and ask for leave in a manner to suggest that you want to take this court in circles. We meet at 2.30.